Ferenc Varos 2, Red Star Belgrade 1, uh, a match that saw a lot of chances for both teams. Uh, I think the, the result isn't exactly what it should be. Uh, this felt more like a 4-3 match or a 5-4. There's a lot of a lot of chances on both ends, uh, but Ferenc Varos ends up getting uh, the win. They now sit at 9 points after 4 matches, Red Star still at 3 uh, after 4 matches, and uh, very difficult now to make it to the Europa League uh, knockout rounds. Uh, Conference League, I think, is still in the balance there. Uh, Trabzonspor killed Monaco 4-0 today. I didn't expect that to happen. Um, and yeah, uh, we move on from here. Um, always start at the starting lineup. No surprises at all. I think the only one that's maybe a little bit of a surprise is Mitrovic getting a start over Bukhari. Uh, to me, it's not very surprising. I think Mitrovic has played very well lately. And Bukhari's coming back from an injury and maybe not risking him too much. So, you know, having him come off the bench, which he did... Uh, in the second half. I think that was the right decision uh, by Milojevic, um, but everything else was pretty much the same. Gobilic, we expected to start Milojevic on the bench. Um, quickly getting into it, the Ferenc Varos goal, the first goal, you know, deflection off uh, Marko Gobilic, and then a shot and a save, and then the rebound goal. It, it's so interesting because there's three uh, defensive players, or three Red Star players, who are in the vicinity of maybe three or four yards, and it feels like once the ball was kicked, everyone already started to kind of, their weight shifted to going away from the from the goal. And that just left the Ferenc Varos player all alone to slot in um, and beat Borjan, which is unfortunate. I don't, I, you can't really blame anyone in terms of the goal. I really can't point my finger at anyone. It's just unfortunate that it happened. Uh, Sonogo's sub was, I mean, I wonder how this match would have ended. I'm not... I'm not saying that Red Star would have won or that we would have got anything out of it, but I wonder how it would have ended because Sonogo is the only cent uh, defensive midfielder that we have on this roster period. And this is what happens when you don't address certain positions in the transfer window. This is exactly what happens. Um, so you bring on Kings Kangwa and you're pretty much playing with Kanga and Kangwa, two offensive players in the defensive midfield role. Now, I agree with Milo, but you're kind of going all out at this point. There's nothing really to lose here. If you lose the match, you're pretty much out of the Europa League group stages. You still have maybe Conference League to where you can kind of advance and, and get another couple matches in. Um, but they said the priority was the domestic league. Now, whether that they're trying to take the pressure off the players, I don't know, but you know they stated that the domestic league is the priority this season. So, you know, you, like I said, you're throwing him on there and you have no defensive cover now. So now you're asking your defenders to do even more work. Um, to start off the second half, Petrich is a solid goal, correct decision, hits his hand. It was a great strike and a great goal, and he really could have used this goal because he hasn't scored much lately, uh, but clearly the right decision. Uh, no goal, handball. Um, Dimitrovic goal. Uh, so this was an interesting one because Ferenc Varos took a short corner, and then they sent it back to, I think it was their right back or, or right midfielder who tried to, you know, knock it into the... 18-yard box, but it was blocked by Kanga. Kanga leaked out uh, Mitrovic. Excellent solo uh, goal by Stefan Mitrovic, who keeps on scoring. He's done exceptionally well. I didn't think he'd be this good this quickly, but it kind of reminded me a little bit of the Bale goal. I think Bale's goal was much better, by the way, but in terms of he chased on the ball, barely stopped it from going out, and then was able to slot it into the post and uh, into the neck sort of thing. And right before that, Ferenc Varos had a, had a chance where they hit the post and you know, it could have been, Fortune could have been on their side, but, you know, Red Star ended up getting the goal and back in the match, 1-1, one, one, um, kind of all to play for. And then just a few minutes later, May scores a header goal off a corner kick where Rodic looks like he got out of the way so May can get the header. Like, literally, I don't know how as a defensive or as a left back, you move out of the way so the opposing player can get a clearer shot. And it was an excellent goal by May, take nothing away from him, but... The man marking was terrible. I've said this many times. I don't understand why teams go away from having players on the posts. For the life of me, I don't understand. Even if you have two guys on the post, you still have eight outfield players who should be able to mark whoever the other team has in the 18-yard box, which makes no sense to me. Again, I'm not saying that if there was a player on the post that this wouldn't have been a goal, but there's always that sense that, you know, having that extra body on the line or two extra bodies on the line... Um, you can stop a goal from happening. And it, it, it sucks because it, it came literally four or five minutes right after we had scored. So that was unfortunate for us. 
Um, Miatovic came on to make his debut. Jovan uh, Miatovic, who's 17 years old, he's with the uh, club now. Um, signed a deal from, from Grafičar and took the number nine right away. Um, best of luck to him. He had a chance late on that went just by the far post. Uh, if he scored that, it would have been a dream debut for him. And it would have been, again, 2-2, two, two, one point. Obviously, it's better than none. Uh, and it would have been a lot better for us. But, um, yeah, that's the way it is. We had missed chances on, on our side. I think Ferenc Varos had three or four missed on their side. Like I said, this could have been a 5-4 match, 4-3, something like that. And the last play of the game was the Kings Kangwa free kick. So, uh, very difficult because it's literally from maybe 19, 20 yards out. So, there's not enough space for the where the ball can get a dip um, if you're going over the wall. So, what Kangwa decided to do was to go by the wall and to get it, try to get into the far corner, which is... Before the free kick was taken, I was watching my father and I said he should definitely go far corner just because there's not enough time for that dip. Now, after the free kick was taken, the goalkeeper was placed so far onto his right side that if there was even a slight chance that Kangwa got the ball over the wall, that he's definitely scoring because the, go because the goalie was shaded so much to the right and it's like he knew exactly what he was doing. And I think... The goalie probably thought to himself as well, there's no way that he's going to be able to get the dip to get it over the wall and score a goal, you know, in, in, in the time that he has. And it was just so close. And, you know, upon further review, you think that maybe he should have gone over the wall. The wall didn't jump either. So maybe everyone had the same kind of uh, focus there. It sucks for Kangwa because he hasn't been very good since he's been here. The, the goal, I think, would have done him um, a lot of good going forward. Um, but yeah, there's a, no one played well today. I mean, I, I think Mitrovic, Stefan Mitrovic is really starting to show it. And I said, uh, he's really starting to look good. I, he just needs to maybe bulk up a little bit more, but he was, I think the best player today. Thought Rodic was poor. Katai was terrible. Ivanic was pretty bad as well. Kanga with, with those suicidal passes that he does, you know, across field where two or three got picked off and it really should have been a goal for Ferenc Varos. You, you just kind of learn to live with it. Uh, type of thing because you know he's going to keep doing it because there's been so many times where he scored important goals for us but if he can kind of avoid that little uh, those things that he does it would it would help the team mightily and again happy for Jovan Miatovic featured in his first match like I said hopefully the first of many to come 17 years old he had that one good shot um, still obviously I think he needs to get a little bit bigger as well kind of like Mitrovic but uh, you know you kind of wonder with with Kata and Imic what's going to happen I think that Ivanic is probably going to leave in this winter. Uh, my Mainz was interested in him, and it was, from what I've read, it was all but done. He was probably already sold, and he's just staying Red Star until uh, January. And then you wonder about Kata. It could be his last um, full season, so to say, with Red Star as well. Uh, I thought Borjans had a really bad match today, too. There's a couple balls that he gave right to the Fenn and players that should have been, again, uh, scored on. So, like I said, the 2-1 result, I think, is flattering for both teams. I think both teams should have scored um, many more. And like I said, stuck at three points with two matches left. If we plan on doing anything, we're going to have to win uh, the final two matches uh, that are left in the group stage.